If you're new to bullet journaling or maybe you've been around for a while and you just aren't necessarily sure what all of the terms are, this video is for you. There are a lot of bullet journal specific words. It's like there's a whole new language you need to learn when you're getting into bullet journaling. I thought it would be cool to have all of that information in one video so that if you're not sure about something, you can just refer to this video whenever you might need it. Hi, my name's Erin, and if you haven't been to this particular corner of the internet before, this is a safe haven for all things bullet journaling and stationery, and I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so happy to have you. So I've come up with a bunch of terms that you might not know yet, but you're going to by the end of this video. I've divided everything into chapters, so if you're looking for a particular term, you can just jump into the description and have a look through there, or you can find it along the bottom here and jump straight to the part of the video that you need. We're gonna start with a basic one. It's probably pretty obvious, you might've worked it out already, and that is bujo. Bujo is a portmanteau, which is when you smush two words together to make one new shorter word, and it is a mixture of bullet and journal. That's it. From here, I want to get into some technical terms relating to pages and spreads and the way that pens behave on a bullet journal page. And then after that, I'm going to get into the specific uses and types of page and spread that you can have in your bullet journal. But we're going to start with notebooks. And most of the notebooks that you'll see in bullet journaling are usually called dotted notebooks or dot grid notebooks. And that's because the pages have this series of dots on them rather than the typical kind of blue line ruled school book situation that you might be more used to. Some people also prefer to use a lined grid. You can honestly use any kind of notebook for bullet journaling, but if you're going to draw out a layout, like let's just jump into a recent one of mine here. If you're gonna draw out a layout like this page right here that has lots of boxes on it, then having dots on the page first just helps you make everything look balanced and even and measure out where things are going to go. There are a lot of companies out there that make dot grid notebooks and they are not all made equal. So the next thing I wanna to touch on is the size of notebook. The most common notebook size that you'll probably come across is A5, which this is the size of A5 right here. As compared to my head, this is also an A5 notebook. I've noticed a lot of people also like a B5 notebook, which is a larger notebook still than this. I don't actually own a B5 notebook, so I can't show you one, but those are the two most common. I would say A5 is more common than this is also A5. I don't know why I held it up just then, but most notebook companies will have options for both. And some will also have a smaller size available. For argument's sake here, I'm going to show you, this is an A5 journal from the Washi Tape Shop, which is my bullet journal of 2020. What year are we in? 2022. This is the first book that I used for 2021 and it's from Notebook Therapy. It's a Tsuki original size. So the Notebook Therapy original size is a bit smaller than A5. And there are other things like traveler's notebooks, which are thinner and smaller. It all depends on what you like and what you think will work best for you. At the time I was using these small notebooks, I really liked having a small notebook. And then I was gifted a couple of bigger ones like this one. And now I think it would be hard for me to go back to a little one, so things to consider. The next bullet journal word or I guess stationary term in general that you wanna look out for is GSM. It's a way of referring to the thickness of the paper and GSM stands for grams per square meter. Most of the more luxurious bullet journaling brands that cost a little bit more will have 160 GSM paper, which means that it's nice and thick and holds up against some of the terms that we'll be talking about soon, like bleeding and ghosting really well. Some other brands use a much thinner paper. I don't know if that actually demonstrates much to you, me just showing you, but this is a Leuchtturm 1917. They have 80 GSM paper in their notebooks, which is much thinner and doesn't hold up as well against bleeding and ghosting, which again, we will get to in a moment. Just to give you a bit of a frame of reference, most regular printer paper that you would pop in your printer, just like A4 white paper, is usually 80 GSM. Likewise, school books and that kind of thing, the exercise books that you use to take notes at school, those are also usually around about 80 GSM. The higher the number, the thicker the paper. So 80 GSM is thinner, 160 GSM is thicker. There are notebooks out there that are in the middle with a 100 or 120 GSM paper. So it all depends on what you like. I personally prefer a thicker paper in my bullet journal because I like to use lots of markers and stuff like that. So having that little bit of extra, it's like paper insurance, you know? The next couple of terms I wanna cover kind of go hand in hand and that is spreads versus pages. As long as you're getting your point across, there's nothing inherently wrong with using the word spread to refer to something that's on a single page. But if you took that to a printing house, they would be very confused because traditionally a spread is used to refer to 
two facing pages, both the left and right, so that when you close the book together, those pages would touch. That's a spread. A page is one half of that, so this is the right page, this is the left page, and when you put them together, they form a spread. If your layout covers both sides, it is functional across both sides. So let me find you one for example. So this is a spread from my February layout. You can see that my mood tracker goes all the way from the left page across to the right, as does my habit tracker. So this is considered a spread. Something like this, on the other hand, you could say that it was like a tracker spread, I suppose. But on the left page, I have my phone and sleep log. So this would be my phone and sleep log page. On the right page, I have gratitude, goals, and currently sections. So that I, would, I would call that my gratitude, goals, and currently page. Okay, bleeding and ghosting. This is a tricky one. Any kind of pen that you use on a page in your bullet journal, there's kind of a risk that it might bleed or it might ghost. And as we mentioned earlier, the GSM of the paper plays into this. There are a few different factors, but generally bleeding is when you make a mark on the page with a paint pen or a brush pen or a marker or anything of that variety. And the ink saturates the page in a way that it goes all the way through. So you can see it on the other side. If you have another design, another layout on that opposite side of the page, sometimes it can completely ruin it. And if you've ever made the mistake of using alcohol markers in your bullet journal, you will have experienced this tragedy. We're not getting into equipment so much in this video, but uh, water-based markers for your bullet journal only, please. Ghosting is a similar phenomenon, but not quite as bad. So ghosting is when you draw a line on one side of the page and it's visible from the other side, but the ink hasn't saturated the paper, so it hasn't seeped all the way through. It's kind of just the ghost if you will, of the ink traveling through to the other side of the page. So it's not necessarily going to ruin any planning that you've done on the opposite side of the page. It might be a little bit visible. Some people don't mind ghosting and are happy to live with it. Some people it drives them crazy. I fall somewhere in the middle, I guess. And this is why a thicker GSM paper is going to help you prevent that. I experienced a lot of ghosting when I was using Loesch 1917 notebooks with their thinner paper. Look, sometimes it's annoying, but it's not the end of the world to have a little bit of ghosting in your book. To me, it kind of just shows that it's well loved. So we've covered spreads and pages. We've talked about GSM and bleeding and ghosting and the different notebook sizes that are available. Now let's talk about what you actually do with your bullet journal. What do you put in the book to help make your life easier and keep things running smoothly around you? I guess we'll move from the largest measurement of time through to the smallest and then on to some other things. So we'll start with a concept that's called a future log or a yearly. This could be a spread or a page depending on how you like to set things up in your book. This is basically an overview of your whole year or if you're jumping into your bullet journal from a point where it's not the 1st of January then maybe you'll be starting. So for me my very first bullet journal I started in September of 2017. So my first future log had September, October, November, December. And then I made a new future log for the following year, if that makes sense. So this is my future log that I set up for 2022. It covers every month in the year. There are the numbers for every month in there, which takes a long time to write out and your hand gets a little bit crampy, but it's so much fun. It's absolutely worth it. And then next to each month, there's a space where I can write down anything that I need to remember about that month, whether that is somebody's birthday, whether it's bills that are due, whether I have a special event that I need to remember to keep free, anything like that goes in here. So in my case, this is a yearly spread or a future log spread because it covers both sides of the page. Following on from your future log, the next thing you'll probably want to include is a monthly page or a calendar page. Let me find you a nice example or a spread. It could be a spread too. This is my January calendar page, which is a bit of an unconventional layout. This one usually for example, I would prefer to draw out the whole calendar. So in this instance, it's a spread because it covers both of the pages. And this is the place where you take that information from your future log and you move it onto this calendar so that within the month, you know exactly where you need to be and when, when you need to be paying those bills, when you need to be picking things up from the dry cleaners, whatever it is, into the monthly log, into the calendar page. Then from your monthly page, you can transfer that data onto a weekly spread. And I spend most of my time in my bullet journal on my weeklies. This is actually two weekly pages. I did the first one as a spread, I'm pretty sure. This is February. Yeah, I did. The first one was a spread. So I had the days of the week on the left page and a to-do list on the right. And then I condensed it down into single pages to save a bit of space. But this is where you take those events and those tasks and whatever you had from your future log that you then moved to your monthly page 
that you're now moving to your weekly page so that when those tasks come up, you can make sure that they're done and taken care of and those events are attended, whatever it is for your particular situation. This is where your to-do list also comes. So based around those things that you have going on, you can write yourself tasks and cross them off as you go. I like to do all of my planning on a weekly spread. I just find that works best for me. But some people like to take it even further and do a daily log where beyond the weekly, they also have pages where they're just logging things for every day. And that might also include some traditional journaling where you're writing down thoughts and feelings. You might be someone who's tracking food, um, keeping track of calories or trying to track how much water you drink or something. So all of that data can all play into your daily logs as well. It can be a really cool record to have for yourself of like, what have I been doing? Where have I been? What am I thinking about? What's on my mind? How am I feeling? All of that stuff can all kind of end up on your daily log. If the idea of daily logging does appeal to you, I wouldn't recommend that you go through and set up pages for all of your days ahead of time. I find personally that that's the kind of thing that's best done in the moment as needed. So you might not need a whole page for Monday, but then you might have a really busy Tuesday and you need heaps of space. So if you allocated that space ahead of time and then you had a whole page for Monday that you basically didn't use and then you need like four pages for Tuesday and you didn't have space for them. You see what I'm saying, right? If you pre-allocated all of that space and then it doesn't work the way that you expected it to. Sometimes you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot with this whole flexible bullet journal system by planning too much in advance. Then we start getting into trackers. Trackers are such a cool way to keep track of things. It's exactly what it sounds like, you know? So for me, I like to track things like my spending, my mood, habits that I'm trying to make permanent. You might track things like the books you're reading, the movies you're watching or TV shows that you're watching. You might decide to track your medications or pain or symptoms and then you can take that data to your doctor if you suffer from a chronic illness or something like that. You might even just like to track how often you clean things in your home. It can be quite literally anything that you want. If you can think of it, you can track it. And there are so many tracker spreads for inspiration out there on the internet. Same as everything, honestly. There is an endless well of bullet journal inspiration. If you just type into Google or jump on Pinterest or Instagram or here on YouTube, like it's unending, which is amazing. It's so great. Another really popular kind of bullet journal page or spread is a collection. This is actually something that I don't really do, but I know it's a really popular thing for a lot of people where you can kind of just put bits of information about things that you love. So you could have a collection that's about Pokemon cards, which could also be a tracker. I, they, they kind of, the lines kind of blur here. Or you could have a collection that is quite literally just a list of all of the DVDs that you own. Do you still own DVDs? Does anyone? I still own DVDs. I don't know. You could have a collection of all of the greatest songs that you've listened to this year. It could be anything at all, absolutely anything. I'll try and find some good examples because I feel like I'm not explaining this one very well because it's not something that I do in my bullet journal. So here are some wonderful examples of collections. What about Dutch doors? A Dutch door is a bullet journal layout concept where you cut away part of the page. It could be for an aesthetic purpose purely, or it could actually make your page more efficient despite the fact that you've removed some paper. I used a Dutch door for my 2022 cover page and also for my 2020 calendar layout. They can be vertical or horizontal or anything that you like, diagonal, whatever you can think of. And the last thing I want to talk about is themes. Frequently, if you're looking at bullet journal content online, you'll see that people will pick a theme and stick to it, whether that's for a month or a week or their entire journal. This is not a necessary thing. Honestly, none of this stuff is. As long as your journal's working for you, you don't have to do anything anyone else's way. But if you'd like to have a theme, it can be a nice way to kind of delineate a month from the next or a journal from the next journal or whatever it is. So I really like floral themes. Sometimes my theme will just be a color scheme, which is basically what my March 2022 theme is. It's just the four colors that I thought looked nice together. And that's basically it. There's nothing deeper than that to it. So in the past, I've done really detailed themes. I did this whole Lord of the Rings layout for September 2021. And then you can see that up there if you'd like to. But other times I just couldn't be bothered and that's fine. And if you're coming at bullet journaling being like, but I don't have artistic skill, stickers and washi tape, my friend, stickers and washi tape. We're almost done. There's just two more little phrases 
phrases more than terms this time that I wanted to touch on that we in the bullet journaling community seem to like to use and they are before the pen and after the pen. Before the pen is basically when you're sharing your layout on social media on whatever platform and you've set everything up but you haven't used it yet, that's before the pen. So you have laid some pen down on the page but you haven't got in there and like written your events and stuff down before the pen. On the flip side, after the pen is when you have got in there and you've listed out your to-do list or you've put down all of the events you have to do this month or you've crossed things off your habit tracker, that's considered after the pen. Thank you so much for joining me and my little spread of terms right here. I hope you've learned something from this video. Please let me know down below if you've learned something from it. I'd like to know what. I just, I like to think I'm helping people. I'm thinking of expanding this into a series like a bullet journal 101, absolute beginner bullet journal start here kind of series. So if there's anything that you'd like me to talk about, please let me know because I want to help. I'm here to help. Just let me help. If you'd like to join me anywhere else on the internet, um, I have a, a website where I post my bullet journal layouts and blog posts that go with all of my videos. It's erinsmithart.com.au. I'm also on Instagram at erinsmith.art if you'd like to follow along there. I post a lot of after the pen stuff there. So if you want to see what my stuff looks like after the pen, jump on my Instagram, follow along. Let's be friends. I love that. I'm gonna go track some stuff in my bullet journal now, but thank you so much for joining me. I hope you'll come back for another video. Hit subscribe if you wanna learn some more about bullet journaling and set some stuff up with me. And I'll catch you again in another video really soon, I hope. Bye.